We are now actually dwarfed within our own technological growth. That awesome force that we should fear is the fear of the collective effect of man himself. We're surrounded by these things, and the cease and desist order on that means that, what, we go back to grass huts? We can't. I'd rather see the work as kind of a catalyst to discussions versus as an indictment. And if I've got you grappling with the subject matter, then in ways I think I've won the game. I had spent about 12 years largely focused on quarries and mines and different landscapes. This whole idea of going to where all of these materials that are being drawn out of the landscape coalesce and get converted into products that we use on a daily basis, there is a kind of a natural progression of, well, what do we do with all the stuff where we leave these holes behind? So if you have a mining operation, you by default have a tailings operation somewhere. The red tailings is really, often people think it's molten lava, but it isn't. It's actually iron oxide. It's like, think of it as rivers of rust. The tailings where I was shooting in Sudbury, it was a 6,000 acre footprint. What was fascinating or almost shocking in the tailings is that they used to be forests. Some tailings that I was walking through were already past the trunk and halfway up into the tree. So I'm walking in amongst the branches of treetops. Probably the thing that set me back and all the things that I've seen is going to Bangladesh and doing the shipbreakers. That whole beach was an environmental disaster of epic proportions. Never seen anything like it. The numbers just are always mind-boggling in China. About 30% of China has now moved to cities. There are somewhere close to 100 cities that are over a million people in China. In the United States, there's only nine that are over a million. What they're planning for the next 15 years, it's like building the complete infrastructure, hospital, roadways, schools, for all of the citizens of North America in 15 years. The Three Gorges Dam, the largest dam ever attempted by man, where they were relocating two million people, where 25,000 men daily going out there and building this dam that had a continuous pour for 18 years to get it to where it is. It was just something to behold. Somewhere in the city of six billion, chickens and ducks are being raised in China at any given day. The chicken packing plant is called the Data Chicken Packing Plant, and they processed about a million chickens a year. I've never seen water more consistently damaged and polluted than I have in China, where you get near a river and it stinks so bad you can't even stand by the river because your gag reflex is, is starting to go. And so you just kind of walk away going, whoa, that's not a river, that's a septic tank. You never see clear skies in China, even in the countryside. And it's basically because the whole country is burning coal at a rate that is just kind of hard to imagine. Whenever I get on the top of a coal, I get pretty emotional because I just see this one as the runaway train going down the mountain with no brakes. There would be very few people who would read the whole body of work as a celebration of man's industrial might. It's a question of whether we're going to have leadership, whether we elect the right politicians, whether people and corporations take the charge and decide that this is an imperative, a moral imperative and an ethical imperative of doing the right thing because there's going to come a time when we're going to say, we knew, we knew this was going to happen. What did we do? 